drive a lot around Florida and other parts of the other states and everything, and I gotta tell you, I can't tell you how many of those little crosses I pass on the side of the road driving around to the shows. You know the crosses I'm talking about, marking accidents and stuff? Those just say to me that Jews have to be much better drivers. <laughs> I rarely see a Star of David on the side of the road. <laughs> there was a senior citizen's home that was uh, being picketed. The people that worked at this nursing home were picketing it. And some of their protests, like they had on the signs, the working conditions in that nursing home were worse than a prison. I read that and I was like, prison? Worse than a prison? I mean, I know it's not a glamorous job having to wipe somebody's rear end, but it's got to be better than eating it out for a cigarette. <laughs> 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 Did I swear? I know it's supposed to be TV clean. Like, what's that? <laughs> just keep moving along. Then. <laughs> I had to talk my dad through his first homosexual experience. That was... <laughs> <laughs> I'll explain. He was traveling, and I get this phone call from him. I knew it was him on the cell. It was the weirdest call I ever got in my life, right? I was like, hey, Dad, what's going on? He's said, Jim, I'm down here in the Keys. I'm at that place Hemingway used to go to. I went to go to the toilet, and some guy in hot pants and pumps followed me in. <laughs> I'm sorry, Dad. Are you calling me from the bathroom right now? Well, that guy's in there with you. <laughs> Well, yeah, it's your generation has to put up with this stuff. I don't know what I'm supposed to do right now. I mean, is Sloppy Joe's code or something? Because if this guy tries to Larry Craig me, I'm going to knock him out. Well, I'll tell you what, Dad. I'm pretty sure he knows you're on to <laughs> He's not going to have the element of surprise. And I love you, man, but you're 73 years old. Your junk hangs down to about your knees. <laughs> I can knit a sweater with your ear and nose hair. As far as I know, gay people have standards, Dad. I'm sure some guy's fantasy, but that guy probably lives in, like, I don't know, Japan or something, where they like that kind of thing. He's not going to rape you. And my dad said, he's not going to rape me. And from behind my father, you hear a voice saying, I'm not going to rape you! <laughs> So when I told my dad, sometimes when a guy follows you into the toilet, even in the keys, he's just got to take a piss. <laughs> I'm not homophobic like my dad. I don't have a fear of gays, but I'll be honest, I'm not always comfortable around a guy who finds this to be an attractive package. <laughs> you know, if you want to have sex with, like, Brad Pitt or George Clooney, fine, they're gorgeous people. Go with God. <laughs> But if I catch some guy give me the eye while I'm like at my job or at a bar or taking a shower at the Y, <laughs> it happens. I, I'm not going to get violent, I'm not going to get upset, but I am going to look at him and say, seriously? <laughs> this is what gets you hot? Because <laughs> usually it takes my wife like two drinks and a Vicodin. <laughs> start to find this hot. And that's after losing some weight. I'll tell you what, I lost 50 pounds last year. I'm feeling pretty good about myself. Yeah. Isn't it true? Right? And, and it, recently, I knew it was going to be that 50 pound mark the next time I got on the scale, right? I knew it was going to be that magic number after all this time. But you got to do it right. you got to weigh yourself right, right? So I did everything I could to be as light as possible. I stripped naked. <coughs> Took a nice healthy dump before jumping on the scale. <laughs> and I'll tell you what, they're never going to let me into that Publix again. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently seeing my plantain and plums makes no one shopping a pleasure. <laughs> But I knew I had to start losing weight. I'll tell you why. It's a true story. I got laid off last year from um, the job my wife lets, likes to call my real job. And, um, and I'm driving home the morning I got let go, and I'm at the intersection, and there's a guy at the intersection, and he's got a sign, and it says, please help, my tent is in foreclosure. Oh, my tent. Right? And I thought two things.
banks, when I read that sign, the first thing I thought was, well, that's pretty much just poor financial planning on his part. <laughs> 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 Who puts a mortgage on something as important as its hence? But, but the second thing that came to mind was, I should probably get myself a tense. <laughs> now that I'm newly unemployed, I can afford to buy it outright. You know, and I had to put on installments. And that's when I knew it crystallized for me. I had to lose weight, right? I mean, I'm not thin now. You throw 50 pounds on this? I knew right then I was too fat to be standing on the side of the road with a will work for food sign. <laughs> It's not going to give me a lot of sympathy, you know. <laughs> I end up handling doing this stuff. I don't have people driving past me with their windows down going, Take a vacation! Quit working so hard! You're going to work yourself to type 2 diabetes! <laughs> so I should be in a better mood, but I'm not. And I'll tell you why. I'm a political junkie, and I was so looking forward to the election this year, and now I'm just not. Because uh, Herman Cain's not going to be on the ticket. <laughs> I was so looking forward to that. I, I can't even tell you. I didn't want him to win. I just wanted to hear what it would sound like when millions of frontal lobes exploded all along the Bible Belt. As these people realized their only two choices for president was now going to be black guys. <laughs> I think that would have been spectacular. <laughs> I think it would have been like July 4th and November, probably. Like the most overheard exclamation that day would have been, What? I gotta pick between two darkies and bluey, right? Just brain matter everywhere. I think it would have been like Mel Brooks doing Blazing Saddles 2012. <laughs> you mean it's definite the next president's gonna be a nipple? You know. <laughs> but he ruined his own campaign, I think, right? He destroyed his candidacy when he came out with a press conference after all the allegations, and he said, this is a quote, I have never done anything inappropriate with anyone, period. <laughs> in your life, dude? I mean, like, how, how do you make a statement like that in your life? I'll tell you what, I was working from home last week, I was by myself, I did at least three inappropriate things. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean by us involved, right? We're guys, that's what we do. We do inappropriate stuff. Any guy who says, I've never done anything inappropriate is like a woman who says she's never farted. <laughs> Eventually the truth squeaks out. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> you guys have been great. I'm, I'm on the way out. Before I leave, just a real quick public service announcement. Um, I'm not making a lot of money right now. And, uh, my wife couldn't afford to buy me something really nice for my birthday this year. Uh, so she got inventive and she made me a coupon booklet for different kinds of sex. Yeah, 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 right? yeah. I thought it was cute. She doesn't come out with me for the comedy shows, though, so if there's any ladies here who take competitors' coupons. <laughs> I need to shoot Frederick. Thanks for coming out.